Hello and welcome to a little behind the scenes video where I'm going to show you how I set up for all of my studio shots. So I'm going to show you the various bits of equipment that I use and how I set it all up for my videos to try and keep as consistent a look as possible. Now if you've seen the video I put up the other day you will know that basically whenever I shoot all these videos it's in the middle of our front room and obviously all the kids toys do heavily restrict where I can shoot. So generally all of my videos are shot in the corner over here. Now I always... He always wants to get in on the action. As soon as I sit down he knows what's going on. I always pull the couch out away from the curtain for two reasons. Firstly because I want a bit of separation from me and the, the curtains in the background. I want them to go slightly out of focus and also it allows me to bring this archway into the shot as well so it kind of acts like a framing as well now the problem with me shooting against the window in this situation is that's the only window in this room so i'm very heavily backlit i can offset that with the key light not a problem at all but i don't do that for two reasons firstly being able to see out the window would probably be a distraction secondly i then wouldn't be able to have the blue light in the background so I always shoot with the curtain shut. You are a nuisance. You are. However, if I just shoot with the curtain shut, you still get a lot of light coming through. So I've got this black sheet. It's just a plain, cheap photography backdrop. Nothing particularly special. It's still led to light through, but it cuts out most of it. And a couple of clothes pegs, and I just peg it up against the window. With that and the curtain shut, you'd think it was night time. Then for the backlight, I have a pair of the Bowling P1 lights, which I absolutely love. And I just have the pair of them on the floor. I use the little arm to try and angle them back slightly so they're pointing towards the curtain, but still mostly upwards. So it tries to keep the light inside the archway. Some of it will spill out, but the majority of it's going up against the window. So that's the backlight sorted. For the key light, I'm using the Godox SL60W, which is a 60 watt continuous LED light, but I'm not at full power. I'm only at about 50% at the minute. And then I've got that coupled up to a, just a budget 27 inch, I think it is, Octobox. I got the grid a few months ago, and the idea is with that, it tries to cut out a lot of the spill from going all over the back wall, so I can try and angle the light and keep it mainly landing on the couch. Then for audio, I have a second light stand that I position to the other side, and there's a little boom bar that comes out here, and on the end of it is a Rode VideoMic Go. So it's only the cheap one, it's not one of the really expensive ones, and I hook that up to a Zoom H1 external recorder. So I don't hook it straight into the camera, I want the better quality audio from this. So this isn't set to record MP3s either, this is set to record WAV files, which are a much higher bitrate, now the cables on these aren't particularly long and if you just left it hanging free it'd be in the frame or you'd have to move it up so high that the camera would be too far away. So up until recently what I did was I had a 3.5mm extension cable that would run this all the way down the stand and I could just put it off to the side out of shot. The problem I found with that is it seems that the cable adds a lot of interference into the audio signal. And then when you try and get rid of that later, it really hampers the quality. So I bought this little cheap clamp that's got a quarter mil screw thread and then just this clamp arm here. So I just screw this onto the Zoom H1 and then I can clamp the H1 onto the arm. So this keeps it close enough to the microphone that I can plug it straight in without an extension cable. It also means that it's just above my head so I can keep an eye, make sure it's still recording, stop it when I need to, make sure it's not run out of battery or anything like that either. I used to shoot with a fairly flat HLG profile and then I have a preset that I would just drop straight onto it to get the look that I wanted. But more recently, I've actually switched to a different HLG profile that has a bunch of different settings that basically gives me all the color and everything that I want straight out of camera. I lose some of the dynamic range, so I try to avoid using this when I'm shooting outdoors. I stick with the flatter picture profile. But for the studio environment, it gives me a slightly better output file than no picture profile at all but it means I don't have to do any tweaking, any uh, 
kind of look colouring changes or anything like that, which just makes the, the process of editing it all that little bit quicker. And then obviously with the A6400, I can just flip the screen up so I can keep an eye on it. I don't need an external monitor. That's pretty much the setup that I have usually. But there is one small problem, which is even though there's a lot of furniture in the room, it's still quite echoey in here. And obviously a lot of YouTubers will say you put up the, the acoustic foam or the, the acoustic blankets and stuff to try and absorb some of that sound. Well, this is a living room. I can't really go plastering a bunch of acoustic panels everywhere. Hopefully when I get my own studio space, I will be able to soundproof the room properly. But for the meantime, I have a slightly different solution for that, which is this. It's just a, it's quite a thick but soft blanket. It's in no way acoustic whatsoever. This is more for wrapping up on cozy nights, but it does seem to do a pretty good job of muffling the sound. And since I know I'm sat down there looking straight this way, most of the sound is gonna travel past the camera, hit this back wall, and then revert back towards the camera. So with just a couple of cheap light stands, a backdrop crossbar, and a few cheap plastic clamps, voila it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but thankfully because it's behind the light source i don't get any color cast from it being red which is a bonus and also because the microphone's kind of just the other side of this any echo any sound that's going to be picked up by the microphone has got to get through this blanket to get against the back wall then come back through the blanket to go back over there. It doesn't completely get rid of the echo. There's still a little bit in there, but it's certainly nowhere near as much as it was before I had this blanket in place. So that's pretty much it, guys. That is the studio setup that I use. So hopefully this has been a bit of an insight for you. Obviously, hopefully it's gonna be completely redundant soon because I'll get a, a new studio and I can start from scratch with redesigning everything again. But that is how things currently are. But obviously, if all that happens, I will update you in due course. I am heading off now because I'm going to go and film my next video, and hopefully, I will see you there.